I think one of the things that made lockdown so extraordinarily hard wasn't necessarily the fact that I was cooped up in my house all day and couldn't really go out. I think it was more that I didn't see people. And I'm the kind of person that needs to be social and interact with other people, so it's been tough. And now it's level two, and we can go out and do the things now, and that is exactly what I'm gonna do today. Firstly, apologies if the audio is a little bit bad because it's quite noisy here. But just to speak on the notion of mental wellness during the time of COVID-19, one of the things that I had noted uh, through all of the South African government's uh, briefings, through the announcements, was that the concept of mental wellness had never specifically been addressed uh, as part of, let's call it, a repercussion or symptom of the national lockdown. Now for our international viewers, uh, South Africa had been placed under uh, effectively a national lockdown with five levels or tiers uh, as it is scripted to that lockdown. Really under level five, it was a full ban on the majority of economic activity. Uh, there was no sale of alcohol or tobacco products. Uh, you couldn't go visit your friends or your family. You pretty much had to be isolated to your home. Uh, and there was a general curfew that was imposed. <laughs> Uh, effectively, one couldn't be outside of your house out of, uh, beyond 8 o'clock at night. And so a lot of these considerations were made out of considerations to protect the general public uh, because of the COVID-19 pandemic uh, in order to keep everybody safe hot at home, isolated. Uh, so one minimizes uh, the, the contact that you have with other people and subsequently uh, you minimize the spread of the infection. Broadly speaking, while these concepts were very, very valid, there were a number of issues that were presented to the South African government, uh, particularly around the notion of social distancing and the measures that were implemented under the level five specific restrictions uh, of the lockdown. As the restrictions were lifted and subsequently moved into the lower levels of the restrictions, what that meant was that some of the economic activity of the country was able to resume. Uh, there was relaxing of certain regulations around how many people could gather at particular types of events, uh, but for the most part between levels 5 and 3, which South Africa was at for the better part of 4 to 5 months, uh, people were not allowed to visit any of their friends or family. Now again, in the context of social distancing, this is a very understandable thing uh, in terms of minimizing the spread of the virus. And broadly speaking, the regulations had taken the shape where its uh, core function was to minimize uh, the spread of the virus. And that said, the regulations were challenged by a number of people taking the government to court uh, to say that the regulations were unfair in particular types of regards. Uh, and South Africa has a constitution and so there was uh, a number of challenges made in terms of people's uh, basic fundamental human rights uh, in relation to how the lockdown regulations were affecting those rights. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail about that, uh, but one of the things that I had noted around how the government had uh, contextualized this specific set of regulations. I had never ever heard government or any kind of body talk about the mental health aspects or impact of such a lockdown on its population. In a spectacular number of information uh, that was being presented about how uh, smoking or drinking could potentially uh, impact the health system, uh, how that could potentially impact how people were getting infected, um, how social distancing could prevent you from getting infected, wearing of masks. But again, the absence of the concept of mental health was excluded from this conversation, I felt, entirely. And so really the pandemic has been a really stressful and might I use the word traumatic time for a lot of people under the lockdown regulations. So subsequently moving uh, into the lower levels of the lockdown, so that's moving from level 5 to level 4 to level 3, and now only moving into level 2 of the lockdown, are we as citizens allowed to visit our friends and family and effectively be social creatures again? 
for me personally, as a queer person of color, I can't tell you how much the social aspect of this pandemic has impacted me in a number of ways. And I think this is true for a lot of people that I've been in conversation with uh, around mental wellness, specifically in the time of COVID-19. For me, it still highlights the major issues that we have, particularly in our official bodies, um, particularly government, but how we recognize mental health and mental well-being as part of a holistic inclusion of wellness, about health. And so often mental health and mental wellness is the very last thing that people consider when we're talking about things like healthcare. When in fact, mental health and wellness should be really at the center of the conversation because mental health and wellness impacts how we make particular decisions, particularly in this context in relating to the pandemic, that pertains to how we make decisions about how we choose to eat, how we choose to engage with other people, how we choose to spend our money, how we choose to engage in activities that help us function in our day-to-day -day lives. And so to a large degree, the pandemic and the implementation of the lockdown regulations had removed a lot of the coping mechanisms or our ways of being in terms of how we function as human beings in our society in general. And so suddenly when you take that away, people are left with very little in terms of how they structure their routines, how they structure their days, how they structure their wellness in relation to what is happening around them. And that is a profoundly difficult ask, particularly if your government is not providing those mental wellness support structures in order to facilitate you coping in the space of a pandemic. Now again, our South African government and our health system is incredibly overwhelmed. Um, and so I do recognize that as being a problem in our healthcare system. But at the same time, it is the responsibility of our government to take charge of those things and to make particular regulations and measures in place to make sure that the mental wellness of its citizens are taken care of. Okay, I think the lighting is disappearing here a little bit. I'm gonna try and see if I can find some sunshine. Okay, wow, lots of sunshine. Um, system that, okay. Uh, I'm really appreciative of these little moments that I'm able to spend socializing, particularly with my friends. And I think particularly for the queer community, that's been a really, really difficult thing. Uh, for many of us, um, we have chosen family and we have created queer spaces where we are able to feel safe, where we are able to feel welcomed and accommodated and just broadly like accepted. Wow, that's gotten so bright right now. Um, Lockdown has been particularly difficult for us um, because suddenly those queer spaces, those safe spaces had been taken away from us. So I'm really, really grateful for the opportunity to be able to reconnect with my chosen family again. Grateful for the opportunity to be able to just be a fully realized social being again. Yeah, so lots of gratitude today, I guess. Okay, I'm going to do the cutout right here because it's getting a little bit noisy and a little bit busy here. And I don't know if this is going to be the end of the vlog. So, if there's more footage, enjoy. Enjoy.